Nevada surprised a lot of teams last year, a lot of people last year by doing what they did, but they still have some unfinished business to take care of. They still have to win a conference championship, but Andre Norvell has the talent on his roster to make sure that happens. An offense that's going to be super explosive, aided by a defense that has some disruptive playmakers. It's a great combination, and Nevada is going to be locked and loaded and also motivated to get back to the top of the Mountain West. And hopefully this year for them, at least for their sake, I should say, they come out on top. Number 10, safety Burdale Robbins. So one of the playmakers that I mentioned, and they like to use him a little bit everywhere. So a lot of times they'll put him near the line of scrimmage and then have him run back, but he's also capable of staying up there and making plays. Honorable mention Mountain West last year, which puts him 10th because he had so many other teammates that finished higher than him, but still a guy that's worth watching and paying attention to. Number nine, Center Tyler Orsini with Carson Strong at the quarterback. We'll talk about him in a second. You need a good center that's going to be able to work well with your quarterback, and Nevada definitely has that with him. Another honorable mention Mount West selection for Nevada. Number eight, running back Toa Taua. So second team all Mountain West. Nevada's not going to run the ball as a primary source of getting the ball down the field. They're going to pass because of the guys that we'll talk about in a sec. However, Tawa is a versatile player. So he had 675 yards rushing with four touchdowns, but he also had 214 yards receiving with a touchdown. So he's going to do a little bit of everything for this offense. He's the right guy for this offense. He may not rush for 1,000 yards, but he could have accumulation of 1,000 yards between rushing and receiving. Number seven, defensive end Sam Hammond. Now this defensive line is going to be exciting to watch. Hammond is one of those guys. Second team out Mountain West. Seven and a half tackles for loss, four sacks. A guy that's going to be disruptive around the edge, and the guy that is lined up near him on the inside that we'll talk about here is going to do similar things. Defensive tackle, Dom Peterson, another second team all Mountain West selection. Definition of a playmaker 32 and a half tackles for loss, 16 and a half sacks for his career. A guy that knows how to get the job done, an experienced veteran that this defense needs to make sure that they get through the adversity that they'll face and bring them to a new level. Number five, offense tackle Aaron Frost, a guy who is definitely going to finish plays. He lives for pancakes, so if you're not playing through the whistle, you're going to get planted on the ground for sure. Second team, Mountain West selection, and you just you really can't give a 50% effort. You have to give 100%. Sometimes that's not even enough because he's still going to plant you on the ground, but a guy who sets the tone for this offensive line and a guy that people in the NFL circles are already starting to notice. Number four, linebacker Lawson Hall, another second team Mountain West selection, 65 tackles last year, eight and a half for loss. This team knows how to be disruptive in the backfield. Now, a lot of times that can lead to more explosive plays for the offense if you miss, but they have the players to make sure that that doesn't happen. I think the biggest reason why Nevada will be back near the top of the Mountain West is because they have so many guys that are that important to both sides of the ball returning, and Lawson Hall is just another guy that's going to be one of those players for Nevada this year. Number three, we talked about the passing attack, and Cole Turner is one of the most underrated tight ends in the country, a guy who's just starting to get some recognition. First team on Mountain West last year with 605 touchdowns and or yards and nine touchdowns. With the guy that's in front of him, and even now that they get Elijah Cooks back as well at wide receiver, it's going to be tough for him to get as many catches as he wants, but... Nevada knows that he can go up and get a 50-50 ball. They know that he can make guys miss in in terms of trying to get the football when the ball's coming his way. A very big receiver or tight end, pass catcher, whatever you want to call him. He's just a, a great fit for this offense. And a guy, because he didn't have the production of Cooks in 2019 or the next guy that we'll talk about last year, he doesn't get as much recognition because they talk about those guys, but Cole Turner is a guy that you definitely need to pay attention to in 2021. The guy that I was talking about, wide receiver Romeo Dubs, 
first team all Mountain West last year with a thousand yards and nine touchdowns, just a playmaker after the catch, just get him the ball, let him do work. A lot of times Carson Strong doesn't have to do a ton because he just has to get the ball in his hands. And he's arguably the best receiver in the group of five. And he definitely makes a case for best receiver in all of college football. Now we've been talking about Carson Strong, so let's give him some recognition. He was Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year last year. First team all Mountain West. He took a huge step last year. 2,800 yards, 27 touchdowns to just four picks. If he can repeat that in a full season and get the Wolfpack back to the conference championship and win it, uh, that will be a huge step for him. It'll be a huge step for Nevada's program. A guy who's really getting a lot more a lot more love from the NFL circles, the analysts and the scouts. They like what his arm talent is. They like what he can do as a passer. And with the talent that he has returning, there's no reason why he can't have an even better year in 2021. Nevada has the talent to get where they want to go. This is a team that is absolutely stacked and has the returning talent to win a conference championship. Maybe even win that NY6 bid. It kind of depends on the AAC at that point, but with the AAC being so crowded, maybe Nevada sneaks in. But again, the Mountain West is also loaded. San Jose State's going to be good. Boise State will be better, and they'll be a contender. Fresno State could be sneaky. You know, there's a lot of teams in the Mountain West, so they can't just expect that they're going to be a walk in the park. Their schedule is not going to be super easy, including their non-conference schedule, which features games against Cal and Kansas State. Not any like world beaters by any means, but it's definitely not going to be an easy, perfect season. Uh, but if they do go perfect, if they go undefeated, then there's no reason why they shouldn't be in that conversation for the NY6.